Okay, well, welcome back to the um, Posty Bike Charity Build from Make a Wish Foundation. So, today we're just going to start ripping out this engine. Um, this is the donor bike, so, this is the engine that we'll be using to check it out. Um, so, basically, we're just going to get a quick video on how to remove the engine. Um, first thing we'll do, remove the exhaust. Uh, 12 13 mil nut here and two 10 mils underneath. There's also another bolt in here. I don't know if you can see it. This one doesn't actually have that on this bike, but um, yeah, we'll get this off. Okay, so the exhaust is removed now. Um, next thing to do is get it up on its center stand and remove the foot pegs um, that go through. Uh, on this side, you can, when you unbolt it, put the brake lever, you can slide it through there, pull it out the other side, I find that's easiest. All right, I'll get that going. Okay, so the foot pegs are off. So they're, they're actually got um, four 12 mil bolts um, that come down, actually go up in the bottom of the case of the engine. Okay, that's off now. So what I'll do next is, you can start to take off some wiring. Um, basically, it's best to access through here. So we've got the plugs here. Um, we'll disconnect this, clean this up a bit. Okay, so we've removed the wires from the, come from the starter to the engine, and the ignition module, they like, come from the engine, sorry, into the loom. Um, I'll just do this one more, you can see, hopefully I can do this with one hand. So, just gonna remove the carby. Just gonna disconnect the top. Um, what I like to do with these is, I'll, I don't like to have them sitting around, because this will get, this needle will get stood on or bent or dirt all over it, so I'd like to remove them. Um, I'll see if I can set up so you can see me. Okay. So, to remove it, on this end, there's a cable and the cable end sits there and that's that round circle there. So what I do is I push, compress the spring until that cable comes out and that slides down the side there. I'll just have to pull out because I've jammed it a bit. That slides off and that's removed. Then we can take the spring out. And then that's what's sort of left. This will slide all the way out. Sometimes I need a bit of a wiggle. And then you have the, the parts to come off the top of that. So what I like to do then is just put them straight back into the carby again so that we don't get any contamination or bend and wrinkle, twist it. So that's disconnected now, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, if you're doing a carby swap or anything, do the same process. Okay, so with rem removing the carby still, these eight mil bolts here and here on the inlet manifold to go in the carby. What I do when I'm doing a build like this, um, I try to eliminate the amount of parts. So what I'll do is I'll just take that from here um, there's an o-ring in here which I like to replace um, I've bought a couple of gasket kits and over the time you you wreck a gasket and you have to buy another kit and you end up with all these spares so I would normally got one of them lying around um, there's also an o-ring on either side of this black plastic one on the carby one on the other side I leave it all together I just unbolt it here take the whole inlet manifold it also makes it easier wiggling the motor in and out if it's not there um, one thing to do is put a little bit of rag in there so that you don't drop stuff in there and dirt and contaminants. And please do not do what I did and leave that in and put the carby back on and um, have a perfectly good motor that won't run anymore. And then to only to find it sucked a bit of rag in that stuck underneath one of the valves. Luckily it didn't do any damage, but make sure you take that rag out before you put the carby on. I've um, learnt that one the hard way. Okay, so... Another thing I didn't mention was fuel lines. These always make a mess when you're working on carbies. Um, what I like to do is just get a couple of bolts uh, that the right size. And basically, quickly, hopefully quickly, ugh, jam a bolt in there. Uh, I always go ones a little bit tighter so that they actually don't leak. So. A little bit of fuel there, but not too crazy. Might be had a good trip then, and 
camera fell off, but um, they're on, locked up now. I'll just dry them off with a rag and clean it all up. But that's the fuel tank plugged up now, so we're not gonna have any leaks while we're working on it. Alrighty, so we're pretty much ready to take the engine bolts out and drop it out. So disconnected the chain. I just took the dry front sprocket off. Um, left that there for now, I'll sort that out later. Um, you can take the gear lever and the kick start off if you want. You don't have to. Um, I've taken off the carby, disconnected the fuel lines, disconnected the wiring, I've taken off the foot pegs. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, all right, I'll just drop these under these bolts and should be ready to drop it down. All right, so I've just removed those bolts. So um, make it a bit clearer. So there's a bolt here. There's another bolt down just there in front of the swing arm. It's a bit of a pain on the outside because it's where those springs are. Boy, be lazy, I'll get up and show you. It's in here. So the spring for the um, foot pedals and stuff is on the way. Look, I, I can remove them, make it easier. Um, but that's actually staying on this block. I don't think that's coming off. So, um, yeah, that's that's it. I'm taking them out here. Now what I use is, I take, I loosen off the nut, uh, leave it on the bolt, so I'd have it like that. Not all the way off. I'm gonna tap it through, um, just to break the seal, get it through. And then I've got this, which is just a screwdriver that I cut the head off. It's great for punching these sort of things through. Um, it gets in there. Because it's a flat head, it's not gonna damage the thread on the end of the bolts as well. So, all right, we'll wiggle this bolt out. See if we can rip this out. This is only interesting turns again. Oh, one hand. All right. So what I'm doing, I've, I've taken the bottom one completely out, and I've got the top one punched nearly all the way through out. I'll stick my hand underneath and support the engine, take the weight, and then pull that bolt out, which come out quite easy. I just have to wiggle the bottom out. And we're just hooked up on that kickstart there. Get him out the other side so I can have a, have a look at it. All right, so engine is out. So if you have to pull a motor out for something and you're not sure about tackling it or you're worried about it, as you can see, it's not a hard exercise. Um, that's our engine. So I'll put that rag in, like I said, in here. Um, I'll give it, a, what I normally do is I hate getting covered in grease and grime and, um, you know, when I don't have to. So I'm going to put a rag in there and I actually put some tape over it as well. Um, and then I'll cover up any, the exhaust as well. Um, anything else that can get wet, I'll take that out. I'll, I'll plug it up. Give it a good wash down with degreaser and clean and give it a really good wire brush and scrub and, and clean it up. And then it just makes it more enjoyable to work on. Um, and also... You're not getting bits and pieces on this case, like it's full of dust and crud. You don't have that stuff falling into the motor when you take a case off or anything, so um, best to give it a good clean. All right, well, I hope you're enjoying it. Um, and we're getting through it, so it's good to have the motor out. Um, I'll put that up on the bench. We can start working on that. I've also got the stuff to button up with the painting, putting the front forks and etc. on, so we are getting there. Um, yeah, I'll speak to you soon. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe. Cheers.